A Abraham was good among men, good among Philistines, good among Canaanites, good among the Ammonites, but not before God. And that's an important thing to realize because a lot of us will go, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. Overall, I, I keep my word. Overall, I haven't killed anybody. That's the one people always say. I've never murdered anybody. I've never raped anybody. I'm a pretty good, decent guy. If you go into the prison, people that have murdered people are going, well, I think I'm a pretty good guy. I'm better than that guy down there. What do we do? We're always comparing ourselves to someone else. And it very well may be that you, are a, uh, you have civil righteousness, that you're a just and decent person, an honest, upright individual who generally keeps their word, who's not a swindler, who's not trying, uh, trying to... Uh, cheat people out of things, that very well may be, but not before God. Not before God. Abraham was a good man in human terms, but not before God. Meaning, when it came to the, God, the righteousness that God requires, Abraham didn't meet muster, and neither do you and neither do I. Because not, not only does God see what we have done, he sees what we would do if we could do if we could do what we would do without any consequences. God knows what you would do in every circumstance. God knows what you would do if, if you were living in Hollywood and you were rich and famous and had access to, to all the drugs and all the sex and all of the money and all of the... Uh, he knows what you would do if you were given opportunity. And he knows, he knows you in ways you do not know yourself. In all ways, you do not know yourself. Oftentimes, I find, I find that, in, is particularly in youth, we have a view of who we are. And we say, I'd never do something like that. I would never do that. That's so stupid. What an idiot, right? And, and what we do is we're, we're, when we say those things is we are acknowledging that those are unjust things. But then when we're judged by the same standard, we all fall short of the glory of God. And, and not only that, God sees, God sees the intent as as if it had materialized. So when Jesus teaches that, that whoever, you have heard it said, you shall not murder. But I say to you, whoever is angry with this brother is guilty. Whoever is angry with his brother is in danger of judgment. Whoever says to his brother, rocker, says, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Why? Because God sees the wrath, the anger, the envy as, as what it would become if it was able to materialize, if it was able to express itself in totality. So we're not sinners because we have sinned. We sin because we are sinners. Sin proceeds from what we are. We've been graciously spared a lot of sin, all of us in our life, because of the restraint of law and structure around us. Having parents or friends or society that says, hey, listen, if you do that, consequences will follow. And we'll say, well, I would do it, but because of the consequences, I won't do it. Which just shows our heart is what? It's, it's an angry, murderous, adulterous, blasphemous, disrespectful, dishonoring heart. And God sees it. So God sees the intent. God sees whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. In other words, if you fantasize about it, you would do it if you could do it, and therefore God sees it. God sees you for what you are in all of your ugliness, not just what has materialized, not just what you have done, but what you would do if you could do it.